one year on with the rocket stove and it's burning really really well I've made a few adjustments to it the feeder tube I cut down I took this much off it I also straightened it up when it was at an angle when I did that it left a little bit of a gap here which I widened and I can close it off with this little bit of bar I find having cut the feeder tube down like this it lights like that when before I had a little bit of trouble getting it going now it just lights very very easily every time I also made this for it which fits on like this and that's for putting in uh, longer sticks and it keeps them all perfectly upright when they're put in together and they burn down and, and it feeds itself also this piece which I put here then I can fill it up with sticks this length really pack it put this small piece of metal over the top which closes off the air feed from here an old file that I have and I put this over the hole which closes it mostly but not completely that's enough air through so it burns very very slowly and you don't have to pay so much attention to it so stay tuned for the video and you can see all the adjustments I made including putting a band around here for taking the top on and off very easily I'll also show you how much ash there was built up inside here I removed the vermiculite from in here so the ash can collect down the bottom because it was too much in here and certainly too much in the elbow outside when I removed the top of the stove I was surprised to see just how well the metal stood up considering the amount of heat that it generates I was also surprised to see how much ash was inside the stove itself. After a quick clean to remove all the soot, it looks like the metal inside is holding up quite well, as is the heat wrap and the surrounding areas. Because the vermiculite was all the way up to the level of the exit flue, a lot of ash went into the horizontal pipe. This is a particular problem when it goes into the elbow as it can cause a blockage. This is why I chose to remove the vermiculite entirely so any ash that overflowed from the burn chamber could just collect in the bottom of the stove and I could empty it once a year or whatever. When I cut the flue down and placed it on, it left this small gap, which was ideal for letting air in. A comment on the build video suggested that I should add tabs to the top plate to stop it sliding around on the stove. So I took some flat steel, wrapped it around the stove itself and then welded that to the top plate. I did this by tacking it onto the stove, as you can see here. Then I put it upside down, welded all the way around, and then I removed the tacks with the angle grinder, and that way I could remove the top. When making the part to hold the long pieces of wood, I decided to add some insulating tape here just to make it a bit wider so that way when it was all welded together and I removed the insulating tape it would slide back down onto itself otherwise it would have been too tight. Again, I sealed everything up with fire cement. The gap left after adjusting the feeding tube just wasn't wide enough, so I made it a little bit wider. I filed it down a little, so when I dropped the bar in, it was a nice snug fit. This is a small piece of steel that I used to seal off the top. I let this burn away for a couple of minutes just to get the stove nice and warm.
when there's a nice bed of embers like this, I then add the longer sticks. From the time I added these sticks in till they burnt all the way down was just shy of 25 minutes. After they burn down, then I can add the extra piece that I had left over from cutting the feed tube. I pack it with plenty of wood. And then seal it off. You can hear when I add the bar that it cuts out the air almost entirely. If I was to leave it like that, it would go out. So I use a small file, and you can hear that it leaves some air flow through. 